Hey folks, welcome to the security table where Izar is editing a social media post as I we speak. G- g- Sometimes this thing is too, too complicated for me, man. Um, um, <laughs> there you know? is a principle of keep it simple in security. I'm trying, that, I'm trying, I'm trying. But sometimes it can be everything. too simple, right? Matt, I, I don't know what you're talking about because I'm, I'm looking at the post right now and it's there. So wait, is the problem that Ezard cannot properly post or Matt doesn't know how to use LinkedIn to read posts? Could be both. It could be both. Yeah, it could that be would both. be a loop right there and, and, for the ages. And it could be a new thing that we haven't identified yet, but I'm sure that we, once we do, we're going to create a site, give it a cute name and uh, blast it all over the place. And, uh, and it's going to become the it. new thing. You're going to eventually sell it to Meta mean, for $2 billion. Yeah, to become the new. Well, we need something new because, you know, everything is just blah. That's a good, good name for this episode. Oh, Everything yeah. is. Bleh. So we started, we, we started the conversation, I guess, before we hit record talking about this idea that everything is boring Ooh. in security and. No, it's right here. One chip. <laughs> All right. We have a, we have a, we, I, we have some I'm going to screenshot. Actually, no, I can put it right here. See, there's no post there. There's no link. Look at the middle. No, man. No, no, no. That's because you're looking at the post by Zoe of my post. But your post doesn't have a link in it. I don't put links. His, it's just, he reposted. I did repost. he repost Jonathan? Yeah. So if he reposted Jonathan, then you only get one layer of the repost. So it's not me. It's LinkedIn. Yours is, but yours isn't a repost either. I mean, it doesn't say, well, anyway. All right. Well, what's, it's not a bug. <laughs> it's a feature. It's a feature. Yeah. All right. So why is everything so boring? So in security, we, and you can even extend it to privacy. We're scanning, we're looking for something to talk about for this episode. And we found ourselves just going through a whole collection of mindless drivel. So-and-so got compromised and hacked. Yay. Ooh, bummer. Uh, this new vulnerability came out. Um, there's a CVE for something that's going to cause all kinds of chaos and and peril on the internet but like none of it was interesting enough for us to drop into an actual episode so why is that what is broken here but do you remember do you remember from the muppets the the swedish uh, chef of course he, he had basically two modes of operation he would like excited about the things that you were throwing around and then he would have like the sad mode well Oh. <laughs> and and lately that's the way that we feel because yeah it's like one more for a little bit here. one more product one more this one more that security passes and the dogs bark yeah it's it's I think we, we we must all have attention deficit disorder or whatever that that illness is that that requires that requires us to be constantly on. Like we need that what? dopamine rush of a name vulnerability or a massive breach or uh, go crazy. Is, yeah. As opposed to just anybody, the run the mill stuff. Is anybody excited about that stuff anymore though? Is it just no, they, us? Like, are we jaded perhaps no, no, because we've been in this for, I mean, how, I mean, how long have you guys been at this? I don't know 20, this exact answer. 20 years probably. Close to 20 years. It's, it's you're 915 over. and I think about 30 years. Yeah. So we've, we've all got multiple decades of this. Perhaps we're just the jaded guys up in the balcony from the Muppet <laughs> show, <laughs> as we've you talked about before. I, I, I'm going to disagree with Matt in there. I don't think that it's a, it's a dopamine hit, perhaps for the, the, the younger ones. But I, I think that once upon a time, a security event would be, go guys, the security event, run around, run around, everybody panic. We are so important. We have to fix this thing right now. And now nobody cares. No, it's like you, you can't be the hero of staying up at three in the morning fixing the security thing because nobody cares. It's well, like I'll, you're doing your job. You're well, supposed to be doing that. Yeah. And alternatively, I mean, it's, uh, it's sort of like, well, the, the scammer will find it. What do we need to do? Right. I mean, 
you know, automatic patching and everything now takes care of it all for you. Oh, if that was only true. We, no, Matt, is, that, Matt is now officially in a dream world uh, where he believes that somehow the issues are going to be scanned for, found, and fixed automatically while he's sleeping. In a perfect sorry. world. <laughs> sorry, I'm allergic to scanners. But uh, yes. Dast isn't it, dude? That's, a, that's <laughs> actually a Dax attack right there because... The thought came to his mind and he started coughing immediately. But actually, actually, if you go, uh, if you go back on that, on, on the scanners and stuff, you see every time that I say it, so, the, the, the thing is that my gut feeling is that today, unless it is a uh, uh, denial of service or a ransomware incident, where basically security is stopping everybody else from working. It's always, uh, okay, deal with it in your own time and let us know how it works. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time you saw a denial of service take out a site? Uh, yeah, uh, Amazon wow. US East, I think it uh, was like, uh, that, know, that was, that wasn't denial of service. Isn't that just a serve that said outage? I thought um, they just had an outage. I don't that's think true. it was. Right. Never, it wasn't I never a heard anybody attack. say. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a DDoS. I mean, it was a network because, upgrade or something. I mean, I was yeah. working incident response in the late nineties, early two thousands. Like DDoS was a real problem in those days. We had to figure out what the traffic was so that we could go to our backbone engineers at Exodus and ask them. And they had, we had to have them filtered at the backbone level for DDoSs. And, and it was called network security, not incident yeah. response. Because we didn't know that this was an incident, actually. It was like... True. Yeah, but I mean, now in these days, when's the last time that I, I can't even remember? The last time I heard of one was when there was like, it was the biggest one of all time and it was against GitHub. That mm -hmm. was a couple of years ago is like so many terabits per second or whatever. And I just thought, oh, that's cool. It's because I'd never seen a number that high. I mean, but there in are, general, there are DDoS some, isn't a thing. There is a but, DDoS that happened recently, but, but it was like nation state against nation state, but it wasn't like it in the U.S., if I remember correctly. It was But you know, even in those country. cases, even in those cases, many times people say, oh, the site is not working. Well, fine, I'm going to go do something else and come back in an hour and it's going to be working. So the, like the, the real, Slack the real big down, flag here, but, but the, the real big flag here is, is I think ransomware, right? Cause that puts you out of business and has a, a longer horizon of fixing, but is that still, still a big problem today? I think it is, but it's not, it doesn't hit like that. Again, it doesn't hit that level of interesting still. I can't remember the last time I heard about ransomware. Maybe I live in a bubble no, somewhere. No, 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 no. A couple of weeks ago, there was some uh, uh, hospital chain that got hit, and that was really bad because they couldn't actually accept new patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was bad. There was a city, I think, two, one in Britain and one in somewhere in the U.S. that also had all their services interrupted by ransomware. So, no, I, I would say that it's still a big thing, and, and I would say that when you go, well, with the board, it's the first thing that they bring up in terms of uh, uh, worrying about it, not only because of the ransomware aspect, but because many times it comes together with later on the extortion of uh, data being ex with the two step uh, hit. And I, I think that because it still manages to get a, a big profile in the, in the media, it's the thing that is like front and center in, in many people's minds. But, uh, otherwise it's like, yeah, sure. Okay. But, uh, another hit, another, not a place that your assassin went away and all that good stuff and whatnot. And there's I, been I no, there's been no, there's been no vulnerabilities of note recently, right? Uh, named, named vulnerabilities causing, you know, log for shellish kind of things, right? Or I want to come back to ransomware real quick. Apparently I live under a rock. Because I'm looking at Sophos State of Ransomware 2024. And it Is says, it a pretty rocket list? I, I hope so. It was that a heavy one because well. it's preventing me from thinking. But the Sophos State of Ransomware 2024, 5,000 respondents across 14 countries, 100 to 5,000 employees. So they're not, they're not the mega enterprises. They're not the big mm -hmm. companies of the world. Across 15 industry segments, 59% of those said they were hit by ransomware in some way. 70% said... It resulted in data encryption. 
Um, 5X increase in ransom bills in the last 12 months. 32% of attacks started with an unpatched vulnerability. So I've been living under a rock, basically. I don't right. know. Maybe that's... That there's a bit of confirmation bias in there because they don't go asking people who have not been impacted. So, and possibly the editor of that report has something to say. But uh, it does, yeah, but they it's, have 5,000 respondents and only 59%. So a little bit more than half of them said. So 2,000 of them said they were not impacted by ransomware last year. But are so. worried about it. No, nah, that's not that we're putting words in their mouth now. This is that's not what their site. They're... Check, check, check later. I think that there is a, there is something to. The... But okay. the point is, people are worried about it, right? And and these are small these are small businesses, right? These are organizations that are not the behemoths with a hundred person SOC team mm -hmm. or incident responders or whatever, and and so they can't afford ransomware either defense or response. Yeah, in many cases. And apparently, I have heard lately that cyber insurance does not cover ransomware and will not help you pay the, the ransom. So there is a very big economic uh, incentive here to actually care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Cyber insurance, something to get me started. <laughs> that's, that's a whole... I've had to carry cyber insurance for the last 10 years or so, you know, through various businesses and whatnot and like... It's, it's, it's a contractual procurement requirement, right? Was it's, the only it's meant, reason it's meant for business continuity, basically, right? So that, so that somebody can recover damages. If you, if something bad happens, you, they can recover damages from you to make themselves more whole, whole right? again. Yeah. So whatever that what means. calculation you would use to be determine wholeness in, but that's, yeah, I don't want to go down that from loss of today. data and a host of other things. I mean, that's just, yeah. Let's whoever start, the, Whoever the actuaries are on that, oh my God. That's, yeah. That's, have, have you guys uh, ever seen any data coming from cyber issues? I find them to be a very silent, very quiet aspect of this whole thing. I think it's just a sink where if we're all money, all good money goes to die, basically. No, I mean, I mean, w w when we talk about uh, risk management and re we, we recurrently go back to, we don't have enough data to, to quantify these things. After all these years, I would guess that those guys do have that data. But I haven't seen it published or, or shared by anybody. Well, actually, do you, I mean, do you get general GRC data? I mean, not just your organization's GRC data, but a collection of data across multiple or, uh, organizations. I, I love GRC people and I am very happy to ignore everything that they do to the extent that, the, I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to be one. I. I'm very happy that they exist. I'm very happy that there are people who want and to you're do not that. A GRC, I, I and you're not a GRCer, and you're having no, to, to, to all the GRC people, you could send complaint to ezar at securitytable.com, and no, that no, will go nowhere. Wait. You will get no, a bounce no, wait, back. It doesn't exist. Let, let's let's make it clear. I, I I love those people. Those people. I love the work that they do. I think it's a very very hard job. I'm just not exactly as as we're speaking today. I'm not excited by it, and I. Don't see myself doing a good job of all of it because yeah. you need to look at things in a different way. I don't. Yeah. But no, rather just looking fair. at, but I'm rather looking at just at, at cyber insurance, which, you know, I'm sure will keep that risk models quiet, right? Because that's, I, that's their IP. But if you look good across point. the GRC space, do you get a sense of like, if every organization's GRC organization is obviously pumping out numbers. But what does that look like across the industry? But that's the thing. I think that they are so busy running around the next SOC 2 or the next uh, check mark to check or the next control to control. I have time to do that good stuff. So what you're saying is we've shifted the burden of security to them and we just sort of like, oh, another no, scanner. I think, that we, I think that we may have shifted the uh, visibility of security to them. So that today, most people think security, they are actually thinking GRC and sometimes, well, on a, on a second place, I think, SOC. And uh, the, the hard work of active security becomes a bit blurred, perhaps in the third or, or four. Plus the exciting aspects of uh, uh, front security and, and things. You know, nowadays, if you want to excite somebody about uh, uh, front security, the best way to do it is to make a list of things and let them rank by variety. 
So are you saying top 10 is the way to go? Did I don't you... even know top 10. I think that's a top 17,456. But then you apply some algorithm to it and everybody applies a different algorithm to it yeah. to tell you <laughs> what the actual most important top 5,000 are. That you can actually take action, change your life, move the needle. Move no, the so needle. You yeah. Shift left. The, so you know oh. the top 5,000 to ignore. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. It's, it's the top 4,999 ones to ignore. And the last one to say, uh, this is not actually Bulgari. And, uh, uh, but no, we, cool. we're, we're, we're being too cynical. Oh, that's, we always are. That's our job. Kind of who we are because we're jaded because of our decades of experience. Oh, it was just an observation. I was not complaining about it. All right. All right. So, let, so, let, so let, let me, let me throw out, let me throw out a real challenge for you then. Hey. So if we've shifted the, if we've shifted the visible If you say shift front, left, I'm hanging up. If you say it went that left. way. It went that way. If we have transitions. The, 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 uh, visibility of security to GRC. What's going to happen when we successfully transmission, transmission, supervision. Now you got me do it. Now you got to transition the visibility of security to development orgs. They're not GRC, but they have program managers who like to report numbers and rightly so because where, they want. Where have you seen security visibility being transitioned to GRC? All right. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to take a leap of faith here that if we do our jobs properly, and I don't mean you or and I, and you know, the three of us here, but us as a security industry, that if we were to make security a quality problem, if we were to get developers on board with security, driving security activities, those are going to get tracked as part of program management activities, ultimately, mm -hmm. not as part of risk and compliance. Or maybe yeah, not, it's not strictly as risk and compliance. I've seen GRC as a very separate animal yeah, or beast. They are. And that's between, why I'm asking. It, it, with a very, very, with, with very little collaboration and communication, like in previously in my career working in big companies, we had no connection to GRC at all. Oh yeah. I didn't know them. I didn't, I didn't, there was no no conversation. There was no information sharing. There was nothing. They were doing their thing about the risks to the business off to the side. Do you consider we doing... audit? Do you consider corporate audit as part of GRC? I try not to think about corporate audits. That... Cause the thought of corporate, of, of being, of that being my job just makes me want to lay on the ground and sob. Which again means that we love the fact that there are people who do that for a living. It's, true. it's just not us. It's not me. I don't, I don't have the, I would be like, it looks good to me. I have a gut feeling that we're in good shape based Wait, on what I know about everybody uh, around me. I have, see, I have a QA background and I'm, I, I think I could, or I don't want to do audit cause it's boring as hell, but, but it's. Whoa, whoa, it's. Trust but, fire, but, trust but we're happy that there's some people that we're enjoy doing that so that they can but, carry but the it forward. But the, so the interesting thing I think is going to come out with, well, what happens when you have quality engineering or, or a quality process reporting security issues and you're up with GRC process, compliance process reporting security issues, they're, they go look completely different. Yeah. Cause they have different, they have different levels of Fears. abstraction that are yeah. different. Right. There, one uh, GRC, I feel like, is at the twenty thousand foot view, looking out the window of the airplane, whereas development security is on the ground, looking around uh, for for things that have fallen in the forest, right? And I'm I'm going to add to that one thing. I think that GRC, multi, and I could be completely wrong here, but I think that they are offering a view that goes to the outside rather than the inside. I mean, you can have your risk registry, and everybody puts everything in there, and it's awesome to have it. A great thing well, to read on the... It's regulated, it's regulatory driven, right? Yeah. Because like GRC is about how am I going to get the package that we have to file for Sarbanes-Oxley or whatever the legislation is, the regulations that drive corporate reporting and everything. Like they're worried about a different customer. Their customer is the regulator. Yeah. Whereas our customer in development security is the same customer as the engineering team is building for. But, but GRC at some point is also, the, the, their customer is, is also the board that wants to hear that we have currently a manageable level of risk. Sure. Agreed. Right. 
but that risk does not many times include the product security risk. No, I would because say it doesn't. They are different, I've not seen it. Right. There are different views and different interpretations of risk. Yeah. And perhaps what we need here is, and I don't know if that's even a thing or might be a thing where people are talking about that because again, GRC completely opaque to me. Perhaps we need to give GRC the task of also weighing that risk, the product security risk, which is what interests us and what keeps things interesting for us. I think in order to do that, the com compliance is all about the controls that they're measuring. And so a lot of the controls are ISO 27001, 27002 based control, which are not product development controls. Those are about information management and about security reporting or, or business systems and their, and their impact on security. Good and old not, PCI. And not you know, product risk, right? Yeah. Right. So have you deployed your environment in such a way that's resilient to attack? Well, what happens if you're shipping something to customers and it's not your problem? What, so you ship it. How do you measure that? What controls do you have? Uh, and so. Yeah, and then, then you have the whole PTI handling thing, which takes a lot of time and a lot of resources from those guys. So I want to circle back towards what our original question was, why things are so boring. What would have to happen in either of your minds for us to say this is an interesting week in security? It, well, what's no. the opposite? What's oh, the, what's it, the... Oh, no, 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 see. no, no, no. Okay, I'm after, going... after the SpaceX launch and catch yesterday. Oh man, that's Nothing cool. could go, I don't know if anything, well, I want, I'm not going to say it, but I'm with it. Nothing can go after. Remember, failure is always an option. Fairly, I was looking for that thing to come down and crash like into the gantry and completely explode all over the place. And it didn't, and it was awesome. And maybe that's, could, maybe that's what, so maybe that's what it did. Oh, so that's, that's, I was expecting a failure. I was expecting failure. But and Matt, I was Matt, happy when see, it succeeded. It's interesting that you would be satisfied either way. But is that, is that how to, so take that to security. I'm not looking for failure. But we, we always look for failure. Our jobs are to look for failure. But when it doesn't, when nothing's failing or when it's just regularly failing and not spectacularly failing. Yeah, but we, it, we are looking. But, uh, yeah. We are looking for interesting thing. I mean, interesting to us. Yeah, yeah. Because we're no, bored, I don't care about it apparently. Else. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> but the, the 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 point here is that you you know what. I'm going to be like, I'm going to age myself here. I'm perfectly fine with boring because boring lets me focus on the things that I myself think are interesting and not that somebody else is putting on top of me to say, now we focus on this because this thing is not boring and going up in fire and your stuff. So I think that earlier in my career, the emergency mode was motivational. Give me that rest. Make me feel important, make mm -hmm. me feel wanted. Yeah. But, uh, uh, then it became too much like that, uh, teenager relationship. And, uh, you notice that, uh, no, you're not important. <laughs> well, then, I don't know. You, you just one more cog in the machine. And, and basically I, I, I am very satisfied with boring because it lets me think about new ways of threat modeling or figuring out, uh, new problems to solve, trying to understand this whole way I LLM thing and seeing what I can do with it and, and all the shiny stuff, right? Boring to me because the ship is, is, is going through its course and the pirates are not exactly biting on the sides so I can worry about other stuff. But uh, every now and that then, that is the yeah, pirates are biting, biting, not the sharks. So they just why are the pirates biting? Who are they biting? Am I, am I mixing you up? Am I mixing analogies again? No, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about those those small ships that they have that down in the uh, south of Africa that you know they come along with the big ships and then they go on board and I'm the captain now. You are uh, no, not the captain. That would be pirates. I've seen the movie. That would be pirates, man. but they don't bite. Sh why you did you do it? Hey, 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 you don't, uh, you don't tell my parents how to behave. <laughs> These are my parents and they can't behave anyway they want. Anyway they want. 
So he's our, your conclusion is boring is good. Boring, uh, boring can be positive. That, that's my point. So like the more, oh, all the action is cool. It's nice. It makes very interesting war stories later on. But at certain point, boring is, is, is nice. And I think that for a long time, we have been marketing ourselves as professionals whose biggest target in life is to make things boring. We yeah. wanted to teach everybody to secure code so that there would be no vulnerability. We wanted to create best practices so that there would be no vulnerabilities. And I think that the underlying message there was we want everybody to get bored by security. And now right. that we, I think that we sort of wandered into the vicinity of that neighborhood, I think that now is the time for us to look inside again and say, okay, what's the next big problem that now we have the time to, to fix? We are constantly saying, oh, I can't do anything because all my time is going to the 5,000 things in the list, right? So perhaps now we have some time. Perhaps now we have to look at what the next big problem is. And how do we avoid becoming complacent in that boredom? Yep. 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 That or irrelevant. Or irrelevant. Well, well we're, you... uh, apparently we are irrelevant uh, already because people keep putting out these GPTs that apparently do everything on security. I tried a very popular one last week and I was frankly, happily disappointed. Well, we're not boring. It, it, no, that was not boring because the, it, it, somebody oversold it as like the next thing. And so I hope that it's the next, next thing because it's definitely not the next it's thing. It's not the next nothing. thing. It's, it's the next nothing. There's a lot of that recently, isn't there? The best thing since sliced bread. That's a whole other, that's a whole other conversation. The hype train is, mm -hmm. is real <laughs> in. Application security and cybersecurity in general. And I think the AI, the, I don't know, the AI wave seems to be losing a little bit of fizz. It was all brand new and now that's not super brand new. And now people are getting down to, you know, getting down to brass tacks about how you make this thing work. It's just like, hmm, there's some problems here we need to address. Like, you know, I'm still waiting for one of my LLMs to tell me after I prompted, uh, I can talk to you now, I have a headache. When that happens, then we, we reached peak. Artificial LLM general intelligence has been reached. Indeed. Ooh. Yep. When uh, the LLM says that has a headache, I can't talk to you right now. Uh, all right, any, any final thoughts on the fact that nothing is boring? Which is our conclusion. Keep no, going. We, we Just said keep that going. Everything, do do, we said that everything is boring. Everything I, is, not, everything is not, there is nothing that is, nothing that is, uh, outlandishly exciting or needs ours, needs our attention beyond the normal. You, you know, I, I always said that if everything is urgent, nothing is urgent. If everything is boring, does that mean that we just calibrated our level of what we call not boring? In other words, did we advance so much that we see the things that we have today as commonplace and so they're boring? And the next thing to go back to maths, dopamine hit, it's going to have to be really major for us to... I, well, this weekend I read something that in China they already used quant uh, quantum computers to, uh, to, to hack uh, military encryption. You know. Quick, let's run in circles with our heads on fire. The encryption is dead. Mm. Oh, it's interesting, right? Currently at steady state, the sky is always falling and we're okay with it. Because we got hard hands. Crude. I mean, remember Chicken Little, the sky was only falling early the once. Because the cloud is somebody else's computer, not yours. Wow, that's a heck of an analogy to leave <laughs> with this conversation with. And I thought that I mixed analogies. <laughs> that was a pretty mixed analogy, so. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for listening to this episode of The Security Table. We will see you again soon at an internet cafe.